Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Nanolade the Dawn. I'm your host, Chad Fury333, and we're going to be doing a standard exhibition match stream today. First off, a match between Icons and Dawn on Onyx Cauldron. One of my favorite maps, although I haven't seen it played a lot recently. It's kind of been sort of solved for Amphib and Hover, that Amphib and Hover are really strong in this map. So I think people might have gotten a bit sick of it as a result. But anyway, Icons going for Amphib, appropriately enough. Don going for Cloakybot Factory, which also kind of makes sense. And I... what the... Oh, hang on. Ah, crap. Sorry, one sec. I'm sorry. Give me a sec. There's... Minor technical difficulty. I've been experimenting a bit with some stuff to do with improving the camera because... Because I always am. Anyone watching this show for a while knows that I am doing a lot of... I do dev work mostly for the camera system in the game. And... Yeah, I was actually doing some testing. And apparently the testing widgets got mixed up. So... Sorry about that. I mean, it's... It should be good now. But that was kind of embarrassing. Yeah, okay, there we go. My apologies, let's return to the game. So, Icons starting out with nothing, actually, going straight for economy, not really doing much else, while Don, on the other hand, is going for pretty standard opening of... Actually, no, not standard opening. Going for five glaives. Oh, sorry, no, two glaives, one worker. Yeah, that's standard. Two glaives, one worker, three glaives, worker, two glaives on repeat. Like, that's, that's a pretty typical opening, so I'm not at all surprised. Not, I'm a bit surprised Don is not actually attacking with those, though. I mean, even just sending one to figure out what Icons is up to. Icons Factory, Icons, I guess, opening build, whatever they've built up at this point. Like, Don has no idea what Icons is up to. Icons, likewise, but Icons is playing Amphib, and it's a bit harder to get... Well, not that much harder. Ducks are relatively cheap, so it's not that much harder to get scouting going. But, yeah, neither player is scouting the other, which I find is very bizarre. However, Don going with three glaives, so they are going for quite a bit of assault. They want to deal some damage. They want to get rid of probably a metal extractor or two, maybe a couple power generators. I mean, they would have ideally wanted Icons to have gone for wind generators, but Icons having gone for solar collectors, it's not going to be quite as vulnerable. Don, on the other hand, does have a lot of wind generators, and they are fairly vulnerable, though in this map, 0.3 to 2.5. So wind generators are a bit risky. Useful, but you do need to have solar as a backup. Icons going entirely for solar, though, and that's going to be a lot harder for the Glaives to deal with. And at this point, Don getting attacked directly. They can't really deal with these ducks. They just have to move out of the way. Don has to retreat. So unfortunately, those three Glaives didn't do a whole lot. They didn't die, thankfully, but they didn't actually manage to do a whole lot. At this point, though, Icons going for a counterattack. They're kind of contained, but seven ducks will be able to break out of whatever Don thinks they're trying to do in terms of contains. Especially given that Ducks one-shot glaives. I mean, that's the thing to bear in mind. This is actually one of the big reasons I mentioned before why the Cloakie Bot Factory has not been super popular. I mean, it's gotten a bit better, but for a while it was not that popular because of this problem. Like, because glaives basically... They got torn to shreds. So I don't really know how I approach that other than switch out to Rocco's, basically. That's the only real option. Switch off Glaze to Rocco's. And Don is putting Rocco's into their queue, but they're not actually switching off completely. And it looks like they're trying to set up something. They're trying to put Glaives in ideal positions, but really the Glaives are just gonna die. I mean, thankfully those Glaives actually got lucky and the Ducks ended up hitting the Conch. So actually, oh wow, that actually worked out. Don managed to get rid of the Conch. There we go. Well, Don and Icons together managed to get rid of the conch. Those ducks really did help out. But that's the thing, is that this is basically now a matter of get Rocco's, maybe get Warriors, but this is all down to Rocco's. The Glaives are still going to be able to harass a little bit, but there's going to be ducks everywhere, and at that point, if there's ducks at a spot, the Glaives can't do anything, and there's going to be ducks everywhere, so there's not much point. However, we do have Rocco's, we do have Scythe, Scythe and Rocco, so two good choices. I mean, Hokomoko is pointing out that Scythe's are another option. Hokomoko would know. Hokomoko is pretty much the Amphib player. Okay, this camera thing's bugging me. Hokomoko is the Amphib player 
they are there we go. like they know they know what ducks are weak to they have had to deal with it whatever anyone throws at a duck army hokomoko has dealt with it or had a really hard time dealing with it and thus knows what's going on but yeah as you can see the rock is doing a fine job scythe coming in it will commit suicide wow got shot in the back by its own teammate that was in poor form, Rocco. Also revealing the Conjurer. I mean, seriously, those Roccos are... So far, they've killed two of Don's own units, but I guess that's really what you've got to deal with, is... Rocco, Scythe, and maybe Warrior, just to get rid of these ducks. Warrior, I wouldn't really recommend, though. I know... I know Hokumoko's saying Warrior, but... From what I've seen, Warriors... Like, in large enough groups, yes. But you're gonna have to basically have roughly equal cost to have a chance of surviving just because of the duck's high alpha. It's really hard for warriors to get through that, and warriors low alpha means they have to stand around shooting for a while, and with enough ducks, the warriors just die before they deal any damage. The ducks rip them to shreds. However, done! Sneaky expansion coming in went through the center and down from the looks of it. Unfortunately, they don't have a whole lot to defend with. Their commander has a machine gun, which is the problem with warriors. The exact problem with warriors. And Scythe's trying to get to the main base, not able to do much. And Warriors are being built up, so we will see how they work out. Oh, and Don's commander apparently did live. Looks like they survived the ducks. Good job. I mean, it's basically a matter of, can the Warriors survive the ducks' first volley? If they can, the Warriors will win. But if they can't, then they'll obviously die. I mean, that's how it goes. So I'm not sure how this goes. And Don, I don't always pick the worst games. I mean, I might always pick the worst games, but I'm not trying to. I don't I don't know which games are bad. I just pick them based on the players and the map. Usually the relative elo between the players. I try to make sure that's relatively there's a relatively low difference between it. I don't like to have uneven matches. But that aside, Ikens is pushing this hard, making it rather difficult for Don. But the warriors are up. I mean, each warrior has 820 health, and the ducks each deal 230 damage a shot. Like, both missiles at the same time deal 230 damage. So this is too many ducks. But that's also 800 cost worth of ducks compared to 400 cost worth of warriors. A couple more warriors, and that would actually work out okay. Or, I guess, using the glaives to screen for the warriors. But it looks like the glaives are, in fact, going to harass slash protect the northeast side of the map. Which, okay, I guess that's a thing. It looks like overall at this point, Dunn is holding on, but barely. The commander about... Is the commander going to go down? The commander needs to jump. Why is the commander jumping? There we go. Get it out of the way. I mean, it might still die, but it looks like Ikens is pulling away. Those ducks are not going to go for the defensive. The defenses. I mean, that's... A, well, a couple defenders in the Lotus. They could go through. And actually, one... Two shots at this point. Commander just went over the health threshold. Two shots in the ducks will kill it, and that won't... Oh, no, it will! Oh, the commander just jumping away as it dies. So close. That was the second shot. And if the commander had jumped away a bit sooner, then it would have lived, because it would have been able to avoid the... Like, the missiles would have flown up, and then they would have... They would have just flown up, and then not really home back down, and probably missed. They might have, just by luck, fallen onto the commander, just by their momentum. But they probably would have just died. And Don losing the Northeast as well. However, Don's not really losing the Southwest. It's a bit hard to take now because they don't have a commander over there that's defending things. But if the Warriors clear out the Ducks, and they should be able to. I mean, at this point, each Warrior takes about three Duck hits to kill. So the Warriors will get rid of the Ducks. And then if a couple Constructors come in, a couple Conjurers come in, they should be able to take the Southwest. I mean, Don's not totally out of this yet. It's a bit tricky, but... Ikens has not been pushing out much. They're getting rapiers, so it's going to be a bit tougher. But Ikens has really not been throwing out a whole lot of attack power. And their economy is not so far ahead that Don can't take the southwest and take it back. The problem, of course, being rapiers are a pain in the butt to deal with as warriors. Not so much for gremlins. I don't see any coming up, though. It looks like Don is not going for gremlins at this point. Just going straight warrior, which would have been fine if, ban if banshees were used, but why would banshees be used? Ikens knows there are warriors on the field and Banshees would die. So at this point, there are enough warriors for the ducks to be threatened, but not really enough for anything else to be threatened. 
and Duns. Now just getting up Gremlins, getting up an Air Factory probably for Swifts to get rid of the Rapiers. I mean, that's possible. They might actually go for Phoenixes instead and try to burn out the Ducks. Somehow I doubt it, but we do see Gremlins coming in here and nothing queued up for the Air Factory yet. Yeah, it looks like at this point Don is trying to rebuild their economy or get their economy on par again, but these Rapiers pretty much sealed the deal. Since Don wasn't prepared for air and anti-air, there's not a whole lot here that can be done. I mean, the Warriors help against the Ducks, but the Rapiers deal with the Warriors, and the Gremlins help deal with the Rapiers, but they're not the fastest. They don't have the fastest damage per or they don't have the highest damage per second. And there's the Swifts. Finally, the Swifts are up. I don't know. Don's basically got one more push. The only thing they can really do is one big push, smashing open this whole area, getting to the center, taking the center, and then using that economy to continue pushing straight into Iken's base. If Don can do that, then this game is still going. Otherwise, it's over. And unfortunately, Don's gremlins are getting right into the... Or not quite in the path of the ducks, but pretty close to the path of the ducks. And boys are coming as well, and that's going to be a problem. Because, I mean, boys just beat warriors outright. And on top of the range and the fact that they're skirmishers, the warriors, they're... Well... They're slow already, and then having additional slow from the boys just makes it even worse. So, yeah, that's not going to work. Don going for a bit of a scouting run just to see what Ikens has. I think Don's probably going to be rather disheartened when they see what's going on. Not sure if they're going to GG at this point, but I wouldn't be surprised if they did. Yeah, it looks like Don's just seeing everything going on. Sees everything that Ikens has built up, and... Well, it's still in the game. Does see the boys coming in, so there is some awareness. The boys are coming in, but sides are coming in as well. So Don does have a bit of a counter to that. Unfortunately, a couple of warriors died in vain in the meantime, so not sure how well that's going to work. But at the same time, Don is slowly but surely taking the southwest. Is that Icons? Okay, I'm not sure why Iken's widget there is as vindictive as it is, but apparently Iken's is a bit of a masochist. Anyhow, a few more Swifts are going to be necessary. I should point out every Rapier is 300 metal, while each Swift is 150, and Rapiers aren't bad at anti-air. I'm actually a bit surprised that Hawks aren't being built. But either way, the boys are... Basically just tanking out these glaives. The glaives are not a bad idea, but just the tanking is just tearing them to shreds. There's nothing the glaives can really do unless there was a huge amount of them. And then, of course, the side is just getting hit by stray shots as well. That's no good either. I think Don might... I don't know. Their the current strategy is not the way to go, and I don't know if they're going to be switching up to anything to deal with this. Like, Thunderbirds... Maybe just to step, just to stun out everything. Throw in some Thunderbirds, stun out the, the entire crop of this stuff, and then rush in with Glaives and Warriors and just get rid of the boys and ducks. But I don't see Don building anything other than Glaives. They seem to be kind of stuck. I know that feeling. You're you're under a lot of pressure and you get stuck in a single mindset of I gotta build this, I gotta build this, I gotta build this, I gotta build this, and then at the end of the game you go, oh crap! There was all these other options I had available to me. It's one of the hardest things about this game actually is realizing you have. At all times, like, a dozen options per factory or so. On top of the defensive options. You have a lot of options at any given time of what to do. And remembering that you have those options under pressure is one of the hardest things in the game. And at this point, I think Don has pretty much locked themselves into Glaive. And that's not obviously working. In fact, that's obviously not working. And that's probably going to be where the game ends, is this assault here. And yeah, that's it. Don throws in the towel. Probably got locked in the mindset of what to build. That actually didn't excess anything. Impressive, Don. There was no excess. Icons did excess. They didn't build enough energy to make that work. As you can see, Don's energy income... It was actually pretty good at building up, whereas Icons' energy income just flatlined at 27. So I guess that's why the widget was getting really mad at him. Because, I mean, Icons. 
seem to get mad at them for build energy. Honestly, the amount of effort it would take to do that, I almost feel like it would almost be better to have a widget that just automatically builds energy structures, like grabs workers and just makes energy structures for you. Anyway, that was that, like, mid up until midway, it was pretty even, and then after that, Don just kind of lost, I don't know, the Glaive versus Duck thing didn't work out, and then the switch didn't happen quickly enough, and the Rockos ended up being a bit more harmful than helpful. Oh, apparently Icons loves public humiliation, according to Don. Good to know! So, that was that. We're going to have another match. It is going to be between... The next match will be Gaiop and Don on Trojan Hills. And that'll be up in a couple minutes, so stay tuned.